So in case you didn't know, apparently Barnes & Noble is still making the Nook tablet. This new one is called Nook 10 inch HD. Now when I was looking on their website, I noticed it did look really similar to some of the other tablets by Lenovo. And then when I got the Barnes & Noble box in the mail, I was a little confused. First, I already have this tablet. And two, I couldn't figure out if this actually was a Nook tablet or if they're just shipping the same exact tablet that Lenovo sells on their website. You think they would have at least just put a sticker on here that at least said Nook, but hey, what do I know? This is a 10.1 inch IPS HD display, 1280 by 800 resolution, up to 11 hours battery life. Obviously, it comes with the Google Play Store. It says you can get up to 256 gigabytes of storage with a micro SD card. They're also offering a folio case for 20 bucks on their website, so that's nice to see. The downside is it's only got two gigabytes of RAM and 32 gigabytes of storage. It's got Bluetooth 5.0, FM radio, USB type C. It's got two speakers with Dolby Atmos and it comes with Android 10. Inside the box, they offer a lot of coupons and some information about Spark Notes. I'm curious to see if this is gonna be the same as my other Lenovo tablet or if there's something special about this considering it's supposed to be a Nook tablet. So let's go ahead and open it up and see what we've got. Micro SD card removal tool. Micro SD card removal tool. Safety, warranty, and quick start guide. USB-C charging cable and charging brick is included. Okay, so it's nice to see. They actually say Nook on the back. So far, that's the only Nook branding that I've seen. Other than that, it looks identical to the regular Tab M10 HD. Power and volume buttons there on the right hand side. And micro SD card tray. Pogo pins on the other side or some type of keyboard case later on. There's the speakers on both sides. Headphone jack on the top and charging port there on the bottom. Front-facing camera there at the top or left, depending on how you hold the tablet. So it's pretty much identical to the regular Tab M10 HD, except for the Nook branding there in the center. So you can see they've added a Nook boot-up screen there. So when setting the tablet up, you've got face recognition, pattern, pen, and password. It also lets you pick the navigation style. You've got gesture mode, two button navigation, and three button navigation. There on the boot up, it lets you log in to your Nook account. So if you're familiar with other Nook tablets, it's somewhat similar to those. I think I'll just go ahead and skip that for now. Here's what the home screen looks like. It is sort of hard to grip the tablet with just one hand, but it is possible, depending on your hand size, of course. You've got a few apps down at the bottom, such as the Play Store, Duo, Library, Bookstore, Current Read, Chrome, Google Assistant, and then some other Google Apps. You've also got like three widgets. One is Welcome to Nook, recent purchases, and then you can also shop by category. Swipe to the left and you're gonna get the Google News Feed. And then your typical notification app there at the top where you've got auto rotate, auto brightness, ring, a few different options for Dolby Atmos, screen assistant, eye protection mode, dark theme, screenshot, screen recorder, notification free mode, airplane mode, battery saver, data saver, and screencast. Swipe up anywhere on the home screen and you're gonna see all the pre-installed apps. You can see some of these are customized for the Nook where most of the others are just your standard Google apps. Right out of the box, storage is using 27% of the 32 gigabytes available. Here's what it looks like next to the regular Tab M10 HD. Just so you can see it is pretty much the same tablet. And you can see it has pretty much the same bezels all the way around. The screen also appears to be the same brightness, which isn't that bright to tell you the truth. It appears to be on Android 10 with December 5th, 2020 security patch. 
but hopefully we'll see a software update soon enough. So even though this isn't a 1080p screen, it actually looks really nice. Snapdragon 720G processor and a 5000 milliamp hour battery. It's also a super AMOLED 90 hertz refresh rate. It also has a built in fingerprint scanner. It also has fast charging up to 25 watts. So let's go ahead and open it up and see what we've got. So speakers on here, nice and loud. Are they the best you're gonna hear on a tablet? No, but you're only paying 130 bucks. So I feel like you're definitely getting your money's worth with this one. Now I wouldn't expect super great cameras on this, but I think in ideal lighting situations, you would be fine. I mean, just like I recommend in all my other videos, you definitely wanna use your cell phone cameras over a tablet. They're just always better. Video quality, you're gonna get 1080p resolution. The camera app on here is really simplified and just a few different settings to pick from. Here's a few samples of photos and video just to give you an idea of what to expect. Now it's sort of hard to tell from these photos, but yeah, the cameras on here are not that great. You can definitely tell that you're using a cheap tablet. It's definitely not the worst tablet that I've used before when it comes to the cameras but just keep that in mind if you're gonna buy this tablet. Nice thing is you get 1080p resolution on YouTube and then standard definition on Netflix. The one thing that does concern me about this tablet though is the fact that it's meant for reading and it only has 720p resolution. I'm not sure if you've read anything on a 720p tablet, but it's not that sharp compared to 1080p. And performance wise, it does feel a little sluggish just moving around the software. I think they should have at least used four gigabytes of RAM and 64 gigabytes of storage so that it gives it a little more power. But I was surprised to see that it did really well when gaming. You can see here from playing PUBG Mobile, Call of Duty Mobile, and Asphalt 9, it actually looks and plays really well. Now I will admit, this tablet is quite a bit better than the previous Nook tablet that I reviewed on the channel, but I think you would be happier getting the newest Fire HD 10 for about the same cost. Mainly because the screen looks better, it's got better detail, higher resolution, and I feel like the performance feels faster. And that's weird to say because I almost always prefer stock Android over the Fire HD software. So if you've made it this far into the video, you may want to say thanks by subscribing and don't forget to give a thumbs up if this video was helpful. This is Brian from Fishbee Productions. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.